Hi, I'm Professor Yunmi Kim, teaching Buddhist art history at Iwa Women's University. I am a member of the Frog Bear Project, and in today's video, I will explain why the study of material culture is useful for Buddhist studies. With the material tone in the humanities, a growing number of scholars across various academic fields have taken greater interest in studying things, objects, and artworks. Historians, for example, now include maps, postcards, and everyday objects in their studies. Dorothy Cole, for example, studied women's shoes as a way to explore the complex history of foot binding in China. Similarly, many literary scholars no longer study literature as solely in material text, but also in terms of how it was produced in manuscript or book form, how it was circulated and used, and how its physicality was modified in other countries. Is the study of material culture also useful for Buddhist studies? And if so, how? If young students of Buddhism want to adopt this approach, what are some good ways to use objects and artworks? Over the last two millennia, Buddhists across Asia have left not only written books, but also various types of material culture, including Buddhist monasteries and stupas adorned with paintings and sculptures. Buddhist monuments and artworks often bear inscriptions that offer useful information on the Buddhist practices of the times. A pioneering Buddhologist who used epigraphic documents was Gregory Chopin. Based on his analysis of archaeologically excavated inscriptions, Chopin disproved many assumptions about ancient Indian Buddhism. For example, he revealed that not only laity, but also elite monks worshipped Buddhist relics and pagodas and built Buddhist monuments for their parents. If it depended solely on canonical Buddhist sutras, these kinds of Buddhist practices would never have been illuminated. Subsequent scholars of Buddhist studies, such as Bernard Fore, Stephen Tyser, Robert Scherf, James Robson, Paul Cobb, and John Kishnick have studied sculpture, mummified bodies of monks, paintings, and Dharani pillars. Thus, material culture has become an increasingly important aspect of Buddhist studies. Now, using my own research, I will introduce a case in which the study of material culture has contributed toward a more completed picture of Buddhist practice and thought. In Northeast China, there stands a tall brick pagoda built in 1044 during the Liao dynasty. Known today as Chaoyang Lu's Pagoda, these pagoda's relic crypts were opened by archaeologists in 1988. The main wall of the relic crypt inside the pagoda's 12th eve was found to be engraved with a mandala of the Vairochana Buddha and the eight great bodhisattvas. My research shows that this relic crypt was designed as a miniature ritual altar for enacting the power of a Buddhist incantation known as the Ushinivijaya Dharani or superlative spell. Furthermore, comparison between this miniature altar and documentation from Heian Japan suggests that the Shingong school's uh, esoteric Nyoho Sonshu ritual was modeled after this ritual of the Liao dynasty. As the Liao Buddhists left few records of their practice, we must use archaeological remains to understand the Liao Buddhist practice and its Im impact on neighboring countries. The same pagoda also sheds light on how the Liao imagined the Buddhist cosmology based on Buddhist teachings. Chaoyang Lu's pagoda's ground story is adorned with miniature models of itself. Just like the actual Chaoyang Lu's pagoda, these miniature reliefs feature 13 stories of eaves, 
a large ground story supported by a band of lotus pedestal and a Buddha at the center of the ground story. Since the miniature re uh, replicate Chaoyangnu's pagoda, each would theoretically have miniature pagodas on its body. Similarly, these imagined miniatures would, in turn, have even smaller pagodas on their exteriors. In this way, placing reproductions within the original creates an infinitely framed three-dimensional fractal-like structure. As a matter of fact, this unique architectural device embodies the cosmology of Huayan Buddhism. Huayan Buddhism was widespread throughout the Liao Empire, and the inscriptions from Chaoyangnu's pagoda inform us that one of the key interests of the pagoda's donors was Huayan Buddhism. Before the Liao dynasty, the monk Fa Zhang created a small mirror room to help his students understand the essence of the mutually interconnected multiverses of Huayan. The Liao Pagoda, without using mirrors, successfully embodies the essence of the Huayan cosmology. For young students who want to study Buddhism using not only text, but also visual materials and archaeological remains, I recommend referring to the research of the Buddhist scholars mentioned at the start of this video. In addition, by taking courses in art history, you can learn how to analyze such materials and use them for interdisciplinary studies. Also, field research is a very important way to experience real objects and sites so that you may gain deeper insights into their various layers of meaning.